What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Yes, I've got a box of some more stuff. Ordered a few things, some things I was extremely low on, believe it or not. Uh, some stuff for summer fishing specifically. It's heating up around here, and as that heat starts to come up, the vegetation starts to grow. You know, during the summer, it can be kind of a pain. We have a bunch of lakes around here that are filled with grass and vegetation. A little bit different take on some of that. Now, some of the things are just some new stuff that I wanted to try. And a couple of things that I've never seen before, so I thought they were kind of cool. We're going to try those out too. So enough talking. Let's get these over there and start unboxing. All right, where should we start at in the old box? I already know where I want to start. The best lures ever, frogs. Now, these are some new scum frogs. There's been a lot of buzz about these on uh, Instagram. I've heard a lot of people talking about them. And actually, my buddy, Oklahoma's Worst Angling, just caught an absolute monster on one of these. I'll link his channel. I'll link that video down below. He's a good dude. If you don't follow him, give him a follow. But... These new scum frogs. Now this one I did take it out. I've already used it a little bit. Really cool looking little frogs. The paint, the first thing I noticed is it's not like a paint. I don't know how to describe. Like even when I kind of rough that up with my thumb, it's almost like it's in the material. You can see there where it says scum frog. It's not like a, a layer of paint on there. I don't know how they did it. If they transferred it to the material somehow. But what color is this? Well, that's the old schlappy toad. Schlapp, schlapp, schlappy toad. What's this black one? Pitch. So I got sloppy toad and pitch. I grabbed kind of a light belly. I thought that was going to be a little bit lighter, but kind of a neat uh, deal there. The bottom, it's got some texture to it, you know, looking like the, the bottom of a, you know, snake or a reptile, in this case a toad. That's what that dude looks like right there. So that's just an all black bottom. Honestly, my go-to most of the time really is just an all black frog. You can see the hooks there. Razor sharp, I believe they're owner hooks. Yeah, owner hooks. With the tungsten internal weight system. We'll see how that does. But again, like on all the scum frogs, the bottom is open. I know some people are kind of wary of that. But the way the weight sits and the way this frog sits, it, it sits in the, the water like this. So when you actually reel this in and cast it, it throws that water out. And it doesn't sink as you're you know working it and going through. So, so far they've been good frogs. I used, I think it was the Trophy Series. Uh, my buddy John told me to pick up some of those. I did. And uh, they've worked. So we're going to see how these do. The new Scum Frog Launch Series. Let's keep with that frog theme. How about this thing? The Buzz It by Ribbit. So that's made in the USA. That's kind of cool. So the thing that's kind of neat about this Buzz It that caught my eye is I like to throw buzz baits and I like to throw these little topwater frogs, but I notice you have to have kind of a keel weighted hook a lot of times. This one, the keel weighted hook is in the front. It's not, you know, down at the actual bottom of it. Kind of an interesting deal. It's a hybrid between a buzz bait and one of these little soft plastic ribbit or kind of floppy feet frogs. So we'll see how this does. It's not a huge uh, buzzbait prop at the front, so it's kind of a you know going to be a small commotion up there. Then of course the feet, you know, something like this, a, a soft plastic frog is great when there's not a lot of wind. You know, it's more of a finesse, bubbly buzzbait approach with just a regular rubber frog. Now add on that little buzzbait, we're going to see how much commotion it puts out. You know, certainly not as much as a big buzzbait. I've got one of those in here. I'll show you, but still kind of cool. It gives you that soft plastic plus the the buzzbait. And it's still weedless, so I can still run that over weeds and stuff. That's a super sharp hook. Why not? Let's try these. We'll use it this way. The Buzz It by Ribbit. Stick and with that frog theme, I thought in case I run out of those, I've never seen these before. Culprit. I used to throw their worms a ton back in the day. I make some great ribbon tail worms. These frogs just looked a little bit different. Short, kind of stocky, got some good looking legs on them. This is kind of a two-tone. What do they call this? Bama Bug. It's a four-inch frog, but it's kind of got like a green pumpkinish with green flake. When you flip it around, you can see kind of hints of a June bug, purpley green flake, just like that there. So kind of a cool color. Um, I just had never seen these, so I picked up a pack. I wanted to try them. I don't know if you've ever used these. Comment below and let me know. I don't know how new they are, but the Increda Frog in Bama Bug. All right, next up, let's talk swim jigs. Swim jigs are an absolute killer choice in the summer. Once all that vegetation and grass and everything comes up, Sometimes it's kind of hard, believe it or not, to fish a chatterbait around that. I know people preach, you know, chatterbaits, if there's grass, throw them. But man, some of the lakes around here, they get so gross and grimy with slime and stuff, you almost have to go to a swim jig. A chatterbait just gets stuff stuck on the blade all the time. So um, the dirty jigs, I have never really used a lot of their stuff until this year. Um, I've had a buddy, my guy Indy Fishing on Instagram, said, yeah, check them out, give them a try. Uh, and I've actually really liked their stuff. They make some good jigs, some really cool colors. What's this? Gunnersville Shad. This is the finesse swim jig. 
I'm going to show you here. So when they say finesse swim jig, what are they talking about? Well, the finesse swim jig is just a little bit different. It's got a lighter, smaller hook. So a lighter wire hook. You notice here, if I take this with my thumb, I can bend this hook with my thumb. I could bend that out probably straight if I wanted to, if I pushed hard enough. But a lighter wire hook, and it's not going to have as much of a weed guard. Usually a little bit more finesse of a weed guard. So places where you've got a little bit clearer water, maybe the fish are a little bit more finicky. Uh, a finesse swim jig like this is great. Also good if you don't have a bunch of really heavy gear. Let's say you only have a medium power rod. Finesse swim jig is good because you can still drive that hook with a lighter power rod. Now I got, did I get a couple of those? Yeah, I also got the finesse swim jig and yellow perch. Now I got these in 5 16 Got them just a little bit smaller for those finesse applications. Now, when you bump up, I got a couple of these. That happens to be in the Bayou Bluegill. This is their regular swim jig. Decent fiber weed guard there, not super thin like the finesse style. See the difference in the two there? But only a few strands here, and it gets a little bit thicker here to go through more grass. Shouldn't have thrown that over there so I can show you the difference. A regular swim jig hook here, and I'm usually throwing this on just a medium heavy rod, kind of an all-purpose, versus that little bit smaller finesse hook. So smaller wire versus a little bit larger stouter wire, a little bit thicker weed guard. A little bit heavier applications. This is kind of my go-to do-it-all type, just this regular wire. Love the color on that. That Bayou Bluegill, purple, yellow, looks neat. So that's the regular wire swim jig. They just call it their swim jig. I also got that in that Gunnersville Shad. Again, in that yellow perch. One. Threadfin Shad. Kind of a cool silvery yellowy. Those are all 3 8 3 8 is my go-to when I'm bank fishing with just like a regular um, swim jig. You can cast it far but it's not heavy enough where it sinks down. Now, I will go down to like a little 5 16th or even a quarter if I'm fishing really shallow, especially in that clear water like this, a little small presentation is perfect. Last on the list is their No Jack Swim Jig. Now, I only grabbed a couple of these. I don't have places where it's extremely thick vegetation, but I wanted to show you all the difference. So if you're uh, you know, somewhere in the South, Florida, somewhere where that vegetation is extremely thick, you're gonna want hooked it's a really heavy wire just like this you can see this swim jig beautiful little profile looks about like the other swim jig where's that at look at the difference there so that no jack on the left and that regular swim jig on the right stouter stouter hook it's the size size is about the same but it's just a much thicker hook and when you look at that compared to that little finesse hook look at that that really brings it into perspective that little finesse hook on the right and that much larger thicker heavier wire hook on the left now with these generally guys are going to be throwing these on straight braid that way there's no stretch you can set that hook probably a heavy power rod, again in that real thick vegetation, lily pads. And the hook, people think, well, you can catch a bass on a little tiny one-out hook, that's stupid. The hook is not for the bass, the hook is for the cover. If you hook, a, a you know, especially a big fish, I don't catch them that often, but when I do hook big fish, they can put up a big fight. And if you couple that with really thick vegetation pads, they get stuck in there, you're pulling winch and trying to get them out, you're going to wish you had a big heavy wire hook like this. So just so you can see all those compared to each other, and that color is beautiful. What is that? Hematoma. Again, I got that in 3 8 ounce, but that color is beautiful. Kind of a black with iridescent blue in there. Looks neat. But I want to show you the difference of all three. Something to think about if you're getting a swim jig. Make sure it fits the rod setup that you have to ensure you can drive that hook home. So those uh, dirty jigs, swim jigs. Sticking with that swim jig theme, I wanted to show you some of these. I got a couple nickel stuff. Um, I like their jigs. I've had them in the past. Wanted to kind of re-up. Now, again, it's going to be kind of the same thing. The finesse jig, this one isn't new. I've had this one for a while, but I wanted to show you little small light thin wire hook that's actually what i've got here you can see their little thin wire hook this one i've used perfect little bluegill got that rage menace on back but i wanted to try some of their regular swim jigs this is called the saber it has kind of this weird keeper so you can see you've got the regular keeper there you know kind of that arrowhead keeper looking deal but it's got a hole in it so after you put your soft plastic on you actually take a toothpick put it through the hole like that push it in there real hard and break it off and it's not going anywhere. It's kind of a cool little uh, addition to have on there. You don't need it. You can use just the regular keeper here. But, man, once you put that toothpick in and lock it, it really saves it and holds it in place. Now, that's going to be a vid I've got coming out soon of uh, a few hacks, actually, with toothpicks and some other things. Uh, my old man actually showed me that. So I thought it was interesting that they had that on here. But I wanted to try, again, just their regular, they call it the Sabre Swim Jig, just kind of a regular wire hook. Very similar. Nickels on the left. Dirty jigs on the right. Very similar looking style hook. 
almost the same size. Those hooks look almost identical. So again, that kind of regular wire. This is my favorite to throw. Again, I got all these in 3 8 What color is this? BG green, 3 8 ounce. Thought it was a beautiful color, that kind of green pumpkin and white on there. That white color, it's got white and silver. What do they call that? Silver flake shad. White's always a good choice anywhere, it seems like. This is a JT Kinney special. He's a super cool dude. You know, you watch him on MLF now. He's one of the announcers. Tidal Blue Fleck. And that is, that is a beautiful color. He did good on that one. Uh, and last up, what is this one? Best color ever. <laughs> That's pretty funny. That's funny. I bet he named that because he is a super funny dude. If you ever watch him on MLF, get in focus here, Debo. But it's like a green pumpkin with some blue on it. A neat color. I like that. Uh, I've never used their regular saber. I've used the finesse. That's what these little guys are right here. And you see these two compared. Again, that Nichols Finesse versus the Nichols Saber. Quite the difference. Now, I also got, uh, I have one of these around here somewhere. I had one of these sledgehammers all rigged up. Um, and this was an old one. This is not one that I bought out of this order. But I just wanted to show you all, comparing them again. In case you're going on Tackle Warehouse or wherever and looking to buy some. And you see all these different swim jigs under these companies. You're thinking, well, what's the deal? Why are they making a bunch of them? This is the sledgehammer. So this is for the real thick stuff. Now on the back of there, as they even tell you, equipped with a super beefy, no flex, no bend hook, made for heavy line, monster fish, heavy cover. So again, look at the difference there. On the left is that sledgehammer and on the right is just the regular saber. So again, a much thicker, heavier wire hook on the left versus the regular. So that's kind of the difference between those. If you're ever looking at swim jigs and such, kind of wondering what the difference is, usually going to be with the wire, um, sometimes the fiber guard, but that's the big deal. Okay, next up, I only grabbed two of these. Uh, I've been kind of on a finesse jig tear this year. They've been working really well. I have to thank Randizzle for that. He's a, a finesse jig wizard and has showed me the ways. So I've been using that a lot and it definitely does work. Has that patented hook keeper there again with the toothpick. Just kind of an interesting, different looking little jig. I want to try them. I've never tried their finesse jigs. I want to give it a fair shot. That's DB's finesse jig, DB's sungill. I also got that color there, kind of your black and blue. That's called black and blue. It's original. So we'll give those a try. And I'm talking again about those dirty jigs. That uh, Luke Clausen finesse jig has been huge. And also that Beast Coast, that hybrid. Whew, that jig is awesome with that hair and such on it. We'll see how these do in three. They didn't have any less. I like going a little bit smaller than that, but we'll see how these do. Okay, next up, some stuff from Cumberland Pro. I got their stuff a while back, uh, probably six, five, six years ago. I started trying their underspins. They were pretty good. I noticed they are a lot more affordable than, you know, something like a, a fish head that's like almost six bucks for one underspin. Um, this, you get a pack of two of them. I don't remember how much they are off the top of my head. I think like five bucks, so only two something each. Uh, don't quote me on that, but somewhere around in there. They work pretty darn good. Uh, I got a quarter ounce. That's the pearl. Quarter ounce is my favorite to throw from the bank. I think they work well. They don't sink too fast. You're getting snagged and everything. That's the chartreuse shad. It's got just one little see their silver willow blade on there but I also got a two pack of the eighth I've never used the eighth but I figured you know a little small Kitek or some soft plastics we'll see how those rock great little lure great little addition if you're fishing just uh, you know a regular swim bait you want to add a little flash uh, you know if there's a little bit of wake on the water or it's a little bit sunny sunny overcast is what I was gonna say and you want to add a little bit of that try an underspin now also from Cumberland Pro lures are these these are some Nico weights. So these are kind of interesting. I got some soft plastics. I might as well talk about those now. These, that's the Missile Quiver, six and a half inch. That's the super bug color, but a green pumpkin with black. I got some of these smaller four and a half inch. Oh, I threw them in here. And the last order, so they've got this little four and a half inch version here. And after I took those out, I'm like, dang, I wish I would have got the, the six and a half inch. So I grabbed just one bag of these because I said I was going to work the Nico this year and I haven't done squat for working it. So got some of these weights to try just a little bit different as opposed to like the nail kind that I've been trying. You can see there that's the mushroom head. Great band by the way. And also it's got the little keepers there. So what happens is you take the head of the lure just like so. This is hard to do on camera. Hold on. There we go. I needed to focus to actually get that done there. So you take that weight and just simply push those up in the, the soft plastic there, and that's all it is. So it gives it a real clean, sleek look, but also if you're working on the, that on rocks, you're going to be able to feel all those rocks with that lead. It's just a lead head. 16th, yeah, 16th ounce. 
And that's nice because some of those like nail type, you put them up in there and when the, the plastics, you know, just on the bottom, you can't feel rocks or anything. I wanted to try some of these. That way when you're working it, you can feel that. Gonna stick an O-ring on here and it'll work it just like that. So we'll see how those do. It's got that big flappy tail on it. I think that'll do pretty good on an eco rig. I still need to really get my butt in gear and start working it. Uh, one of my buddies has been absolutely killing it on this. So we'll see how those do, those missile bait quivers and some uh, some Nico heads from Cumberland Pro Lures. Okay, next up, I forgot I got these. I got one pack of these uh, in the one tenth. These are the Nico shrooms made by Z-Man. It's got the little wire there. You can see the wire that you would take that Z-Man Elastec, stick it up in there and push it all the way down. I didn't know how those Cumberland Lures ones would work um, on the Elastec just because it's so tough. So I grabbed one pack of these to try. I think they're a little bit more expensive, almost like a dollar a weight, which is pretty insane. So I grabbed one just so I could give you all an honest opinion and see if they uh, they really are worth it. But those are the Nico Shrooms heads. A couple crankbaits. Uh, I think I bought three of these. Uh, one white one I already threw in my tackle box. But these I had never seen before. I didn't know they made a little tiny version like this. This is the square bill 3.5. So you can see they're real small square bill. So they must name it by how deep it goes. I'm used to the kind of Lucky Craft 1.5 and then... A 2.5 is larger, so I was thinking a 3.5 might be bigger, but I noticed that it said on the deal it was a little bit smaller crankbait. So we're going to see how those do. Just a little small, little bit more finesse crankbait. Ghost green craw here, and they just call that the old sexy back. Okay, next up, a couple of these. I'm actually kind of disappointed in these. These are from Zapu. These are some skirts that you're supposed to be able to put on. Well, you can just see it right there. Some skirts, you take the head of it and clip it onto a like a swim bait hook. And it essentially gives your swim bait, you know, just a regular paddle tail swim bait, this skirted look. Let's cut this off here because you're probably wondering, Debo, why are you upset? Those things look kind of neat. Well, I thought the same thing too until I saw what actual screw-on soft plastic keepers they have. So when you look at it, there's the soft plastic keeper. Super small and tiny. I hate that because I like to go to those owner, those big, large screw locks. Um, you save the noses of your bait. They keep stuck in there a lot more. These little small tiny ones pull out really easy. So I didn't like that. I don't know how well that's gonna do. You can see the way they have it there is you're supposed to just screw it into the swim bait and keep that on there. I don't know how well that's gonna hold it. You can see it's got some of that, I think they call it flashaboo or whatever that flashy stuff is with the skirt there. Just supposed to bulk it up a little, give it a little bit different look. I don't know how well that's gonna do it keeping those swim baits, but I got a couple packs of those. I couldn't tell you what color it's in because I don't, I don't read that. We're going to call that glittery green pumpkin chartreuse and uh, glittery dirty midnight shad. I don't know. Those are the colors I got. Almost to the end here, just a couple more things. Now, I got some of these, some of these kind of cylinder weights. Now, you'll be able to see the difference here in just a second. This is a quarter ounce lead weight. Those things look absolutely gargantuan, but I got it for some Tokyo rigs. Got a couple packs. These were pretty cheap. Just to see how that does. It's hollow inside. You can see, so I'll slide the, uh, the Tokyo rig wire down in there. People said this type does a lot better when you're working around rock. So I figured I'd try that now. I also got a couple packs of these, these swing heads. I like these. They had these on sale. These are tungsten. So look at the difference. That's a quarter ounce tungsten head versus a quarter ounce chunk of lead. Now I know these are hollow, but still, that's one huge advantage to tungsten is it's so much more dense, so much smaller. Look at that, the size difference. Swing head jigs are nice. I don't fish them as much as I should, but I have had luck on them in the past. Uh, you know, around some kind of rubbly, gravelly rock, just slow rolling it over that. Uh, they work really well. They kind of hunt and make whatever your plastic is on there. You know, the Biffle Bug, Tommy Biffle made that pretty famous, but there we go. Only a couple things left in here. How about this thing? I saw uh, a new little buzz bait. Pretty neat. It's from Mesu Fishing there. Remember, make them say, uh, reminds me of an old rap song, some old Master P. But this was kind of unique because you can see there it's got the EWG hook on there. So you can put whatever soft plastic you want on. It's meant for a soft plastic, you know, I would assume like paddle tail or if you want to put like a, uh, you know, horny toad or a zoom toad, ribbit toad type thing on here. It's meant to keep that soft plastic on and keep it weedless. So I thought something like this for a, a paddle tail on there would be amazing. I've never seen a buzz bait like this. I'm sure they have them out there. I haven't really looked, but usually I just throw kind of a regular buzz bait. We'll see how this dude does. It's got the holes in it. I think that uh, assists with making like a bubble trail or whatever. We'll see how this thing does. I've never heard of the company, but I really like that kind of free swinging, weedless EWG style hook on there. And that is a trocar, you can tell, because see how that baby's like surgically sharpened? Oh, 
and it says it right there. Ha! Huh? Guess you should read, Debo. Okay, second to last thing. Flukes. I've been throwing the flukes a lot more this year. People said go with a larger bait. You'll catch bigger fish, Debo. Maybe you'll weed out some of those dinks. So I got some larger flukes. These are the 7-inch Magnum Super Fluke. Now, this is in Smoke and Shad, and a couple people say that this is an absolute killer color. Look at how big this thing is. That is an absolute monster of a, a soft plastic fluke there. We'll see how those do. Probably get like a 6 out hook for those. 7 out if I've got some. I don't know. Throw those weightless. See if we can call up some big, huge, hungry post spawners. 7-inch Magnum Super Fluke. Now, last but not least in there, Mans. Y'all know I'm a huge fan of Mans. They were absolutely one of my favorite companies back in the day when I was younger. It is made in America, too. But this is the Springer Worm. I haven't had a chance to throw it yet. Bass Geek already beat me to the punch on this. I saw this worm, and I was like, what? This thing is absolutely crazy looking. I've never seen anything like it. What makes it so interesting and unique is inside there, you can see anything look a little bit different and weird. Well, it's not called a spring or worm for nothing. There's a spring inside there, a spring the whole length of this worm. So that's not only adding weight to it, but it's making it really, really bouncy. Now it gives you some instructions on here. Insert hook through bait at slight angle under two strands of the coil, bringing the hook point back out as shown. So not only does it have a spring in it, not only is it supposed to accentuate the wiggle, it's already got built-in O-rings for you. So as long as you hook under those little tiny deals of the spring there, it's supposed to hold this on your hook so you're supposed to not lose it. Now, whether that works or not, I don't know. I haven't got a chance to use them. I haven't got a chance to check out Bass Geek's video on this either. I saw he had some and I said, you dirty rascal, you beat me out fishing these. But I'll link his video down below. If you've not subscribed and checked out Bass Geek, he is a super cool cat. Make sure you subscribe. Check out his video on it. I need to check that out to see how these do, but I want to test them for myself as well. So those are the man's Springer worms with a daggum spring inside there. But that's it. That's it. That's all in the box. All right, fish your friends. That's going to do it for tonight. Comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see me take out and fish. Maybe it's these six and a half inch quivers on a little Nico rig. Maybe you're looking forward to this uh, this buzz it ribbit deal, kind of a frog buzz bait hybrid. Maybe you just want some straight up frog fishing with these new scum frogs. I've heard a lot about them. We're going to see how they do. Or maybe just the good old swim jig, one of my absolute favorites. I'm excited to get some of these out and test them. Now tonight's subscribe fishing friend is Darth Vader. I know as weird as that sounds, that's his actual screen name. I don't know his actual name, but Darth Vader, you comment and support my stuff. So thank you. That means a lot. Even if you are part of the Imperial Forces, uh, whatever, I'll put that aside. Thank you for watching and thank you everybody else who watches and supports the channel. I've said it again, said it before, and I'll say it again. However that saying goes, I appreciate all of you. I could never have imagined my channel would do this well. I'm some dude in Iowa sitting in his basement talking to all of you on my uh, phone. It's not even a real camera. But anyway, it's late. I still have to edit. So thank you all for watching. And until next time.